Today we're going to be talking about the buffer and sustain frames per second of the new Nikon Z8 and the one gotcha you need to be aware of when you're using this camera for wildlife photography. So let's talk about it. Hope all is well with everyone and that you're out there enjoying your summer. Okay, the Nikon Z8. What a camera. I'll have a review on this camera very soon, how it's holding up to Alaska and wildlife photography in general. Last week we talked about the buffer speeds and why the CF Express Type B was crucial for the Nikon Z8 and the Nikon Z9. That discussion was tested around the single CF Express Type B card, not dual cards used or any other file type except for lossless RAW. Now we're going to be talking about the buffer and sustained frames per second with different file types, card types, and card configurations on this camera. And the configuration you need to be aware of is it will affect how many shots you'll get in a burst. One of the cripple hammers that hit the Z8 versus the Z9 was it received dual card slots on the configuration of CF Express Type or QXD and SD card slot. That's the cripple hammer, the SD part of it. How is it a cripple hammer to the camera versus the Z9? If you're going to be shooting redundant, your frames per second will be reduced for most of the file types. Why? The frames per second will be bottlenecked by your slowest card, which is the SD card. Let's explain the methods that the Z8 can store the files as in the dual card configuration. You can record your images on the Z8 as raw lossless and raw high efficiency modes and JPEG in various fine and normal modes. We're going to discuss RAW, RAW High Efficiency Star, and JPEG HEF Fine Star in this discussion as that's what most wildlife shooters use. You can configure the camera to use both card slots, and that is where the gotcha is going to happen. You can configure how the images are written to the card as follows. Overflow, Backup, RAW Primary, and JPEG Secondary, or JPEG to both cards. The first type is what I suggest to use if you're utilizing both cards in wildlife photography. That's Overflow. On this method, it will write how you have requested for each image to be written to the primary card, which should be your type B because it's the fastest frames per second sustained as we discussed the speeds in the last video. And once that card fills up, it starts writing to the secondary card, which will be your SD card. And now you're at the mercy of the slower speeds of the SD card. How slow? We'll give you those test numbers in a little bit after we finish talking about the recording methods that you can do in this camera. The next type is called copy. This method and the next one we'll discuss will be the ones that will throttle your frames per second when you're shooting. This method writes the image that you've designated to both cards at the same time. So now you're only as fast as your slowest card, which is your SD card. And again, I'll give you those numbers here in a minute. The next is raw to primary and JPEG to secondary. Again, lower frames per second due to your SD card again. And lastly, you have JPEG to both cards, and again, slow down because of the SD card again. All right, before we get to the numbers, if you're enjoying the content of the channel, please like, subscribe, watch the video all the way through. That's the best way you can help out with the algorithm. And if you want to help us out monetarily to, you know, buy more cameras like this because they're not cheap, and think about becoming a member of the channel, which is as low as a dollar a month to support the channel. Okay, for the numbers, let's start with the overflow card method first, just to set the benchmark for everything from here on out, which it will record only until the Type B card is full. For lossless RAW, we get 112 images before the buffer wall and about 180 images in 10 second burst, which means we get around 16 frames per second to infinity or the card fills up. And when that happens, it moves to the SD card and then your bottleneck now at the SD card to get about four frames per second on a V90 card and two frames per second on a V30 card in the SD slot. So once your Type B fills up, you'll fill it and you'll want to stop taking shots. Now, if you're going to shoot two cards, this is the one I suggest. But I would suggest most times you just use one card and that's it. Just the Type B card and you get a high capacity and you're okay. I only have the SD card in as if you just have to maybe spill over if you fill that thing up. But if you're using like I do a one terabyte card, you're probably not going to have that happen. So to show you what that sounds like when you're shooting at the Type B card in the primary on the overflow method, this is what it'll sound like when you take off for a 10 second burst. <laughs> 
So that's, you'll hear it goes fast at 20 frames a second, and then it'll start stuttering. You get about four seconds or so at the 112 frames, then you start buffering. And, and you're gonna get about, after that, start stuttering and slowing down and reduce frame rate, you're gonna get 16 frames a second to almost 17, depending on which, the Delkin or the Exascend cards, which is the ones that I use. The Exascend is a phenomenal card. Go watch the last video to see more about that card. In Raw High Efficiency Star, it just keeps shooting at 20 frames per second until you fill up the card. Same for the JPEG Fine Star. Just shoots forever at 20 frames per second. But once you overflow into the SD card, now you're gonna be dropping out of seven frames per second with a V90 SD card. Okay, how bottlenecked and crippled frames per second if you're shooting the copy method? This is where the cripple hammer happens. This is where you gotta be really careful if you're wildlife photography and you need to cover fast action and a lot of shots fast. So in the copy method, the first one we're gonna show you is the Type B card, the Exus N card, and a V90 card so you can hear what that sounds like. So let me get it set up. So you go to your photo menu, just to show you how this is set up. You go down to your primary slot selection, make sure your CF Express is set. Then you go down to secondary slot function and you set this to backup, because that's what we're talking about here in backup. So now we're gonna come down to image quality and this is where you tell it we're gonna do lossless raw. And we'll go down to raw recording and make sure we have lossless compression set on here. All right, so here's what it sounds like when you shoot that, when you hit that buffer, we'll do a 10 second burst. You'll hear the rapid fire, then you hear the stutter. So that's what it sounds like. So you notice we hit that wall, you notice how much the slower the stutter is as opposed to when we were shooting just the primary card only. You know, when we went to that, we had 16 frames per second. So what are those numbers? Well, we get 32 images in a 1.7 seconds before we hit the buffer wall, and in 10 second bursts, we get 69 images. And our reduced frames per second after we hit that wall is 4.3 frames per second. Ouch, pretty bad. And what about a V30 card instead of a V90 card, which is much slower? Well, you get 32 images before you hit the buffer wall, and in 10 seconds, you get 47 shots. So that leaves you at a frames per second after that, in a 10 second burst, you're getting 1.8 frames per second. Ouch. So that's why I say I would advise you to use a V90 card. Well, what if we set the primary to raw and JPEG the secondary on the ST slot. I think it'd be faster. Well, weirdly enough, the numbers are exactly the same. No advantage. The same numbers you got when you're going raw to raw, exactly the same, no advantage. And if you set JPEG to both cards, your numbers that I gave you on the raw to raw are exactly the same. What if we set everything to JPEG fine on the primary card and the secondary card? Well, you're still bottleneck, and if you're using a V90 card, you're gonna get 52 images at 2.7 seconds before you hit the buffer wall, and 105 shots in 10 seconds at JPEG fine. And that breaks out to be 7.3 frames per second once you hit that, after you hit that buffer wall. And the V30 card gets 43 images in 2.4 seconds and 65 images in 10 seconds, which is 2.9 frames per second. Okay, what's the conclusion after all these tests we run about the buffers and the setups? Well, if you're gonna use two cards in the camera and use anything besides overflow, your buffer will get hit much faster and your frames per second's really gonna suffer. So what's my advice? Well, for most shooters in wildlife photography, if you don't need to shoot redundant, the copy method it is, Shoot raw high efficiency plus and use a Type B card, a Delkin or Xen card, one of the fastest cards you can get hold of. Either use it just as a solo card with no other secondary card in it, or if you have a secondary card, set it to overflow only. That's gonna give you the fastest frames per second and you're never gonna run out. It's gonna run 20 frames a second until you run out of memory on that Type B card. For me, I'm still gonna be shooting lossless raw and no secondary card. And I'm using a one terabyte card, that's probably why. And I'll get it the slowest once I get past the buffer wall. It's gonna be 16 frames per second, which was good to me after the initial four plus seconds burst at 20 frames a second. That's just due to I get a better image processing out of DxO Pure Raw using a lossless raw versus a raw, raw high efficiency star. Well, that's a lot to say in one mouthful. And if you do need to shoot redundant, you want a copy of the image every time you take a shot to both cards, make sure you have a V90 SD card and you shoot raw high efficiency star. So you get the 52 images in just shy of three seconds and after that you'll get seven frames per second. Otherwise, if you shoot raw losses, it's gonna hurt as you're gonna be going 34 images and four frames per second, pretty slow.
And I never advise shooting JPEG personally, just you cripple yourself and you can get to the editing process of photography if you do. Now, doing editing is not for everybody. I understand some people do need to shoot JPEG because they're just not comfortable doing the editing. With a lot of videos on there to how to edit, it's really not that hard, but it does have a little bit of learning curve. I hope that helps you understand the pros and cons of the dual card slot functionality of the Nikon Z8. The pro is if you use the fastest Type B cards for raw lossless at 20 frames per second and 16 frames per second after the buffer wall or raw high efficiency star, which is pretty much unlimited until you fill the card up. And the cons are if you need to shoot redundant, you're going to take a huge hit in your frames per second. And again, until next time, guys, get out there and go run that shutter.